Hello, and thank you for joining us today um, for our webinar, Choosing the Right VPN for Your Business. My name is Carly Sherman with the product and marketing team here at Untangle. If you have any questions today during the webinar, please include them in the Q&A tab and we will answer them as time permits. And on to the webinar. So as we all know, um, VPN has um, had more than just a moment in the sun. Um, many businesses transition to partial or fully remote workforces to combat the spread of COVID-19 pandemic in 2020. IT teams are now tasked with ensuring that the VPN that they are using is really the best one for their network and end users long term. Today, Chad McNaughton, our technical marketing engineer, will be presenting our webinar. And Chad is going to go over a lot of detailed information today. We have already included a PDF of the presentation that will be available for you to download in the attachments tab for your reference. So without further ado, I'm going to hand this on over to Chad. Yeah, thanks, Carly. Uh, thanks, everyone, for joining us. Um, like Carly said, VPN has obviously come to the forefront here over the last year or so. Um, this is actually a really timely webinar as Untangle, as a company, is switching our VPN for remote workers at midnight tonight. So I can actually kind of show you guys how I'm going to do that at my house with WireGuard, and we'll go through some use cases for all our different VPN scenarios here. Um, obviously, VPN has a couple of different use cases for your business. We're going to get through Pretty much all those, we're not going to be doing super deep dives into the applications themselves. But if you need any follow-ups or you have any other questions, you can contact us at presales at untangle.com. That'll come to me or sales at untangle.com. Just some quick best practices for VPN in your business. Um, obviously, you want to stay up to date with current versions and clients and all your VPN and any other software. Um, SolarWinds users are a little nervous about that this week. I understand um, the VPNs we use mo mostly are tried and true protocols, things like IPsec, you know, they started working on that in 1986. OpenVPN has been around and is tried and true. So we'll go over all the options here and uh, obviously staying up to date on your VPN and the rest of your software is a pretty important best practice. Uh, testing your VPN capabilities with different groups, different types of employees, et cetera, is gonna be really important. Um, that's one of the reasons we're actually switching to WireGuard tonight at Untangle because we're currently using OpenVPN, which is great. It's free, but it can slow you down sometimes and it introduces some latency here and there. So we do have so many options. You can really, you know, kind of download a, a two-week trial of Untangle, throw it online, start testing everything with our 14-day our trial, and then see what see which VPN is giving you the best performance if you need to switch around. Some organizations will obviously require certain types of VPN, like a healthcare organization will require IPsec. We'll get into that later. Two-factor authentication is obviously important. Multi-factor auth when available is a best practice. Um, we do have a couple of different ways to do that with our VPN. And then obviously password management is a, is a best practice in general these days. Try to use strong passwords. Uh, employee training, employee education, user education is always the tip of the spear with your best practices. So get your employees trained up on their VPN options and their security. So Untangle's network, whoops, Untangle's network security framework basically looks like this architecturally. Um, we do offer three products now, the NG Firewall, our command center, which is the management platform, and then the SD-WAN router, which is basically just a little VPN router for your remote sites. Um, it's using OpenVPN right now. When SD-WAN router 3.0 comes out, it's going to switch to WireGuard as well. So it'll be a really, really fast, really interesting little VPN router. So you can see we want the SD-WAN router out at your branch location using VPN to feed that traffic to the NG Firewall where content filtering is performed. The SD-WAN router doesn't do any filtering. It's just a micro firewall router. I think I muted myself when I coughed. I hope so. Um, so basically, dispersed businesses, even just remote workers, um, Untangle is actually a really, really good example of this because we're a small business with offices in two different states, California and Colorado, respectively. And we're currently all basically locked down because of those two states. So a lot of us are working from home remotely. Uh, I work from home permanently. So I'm one of these people that has kind of always on VPN when I'm working. So just to compare some VPN options here really quickly, we'll start with IPsec because it's, I mentioned kind of the one that's just long in the tooth and is tried and true and used by lots and lots of different organizations for security. Um, by nature, all VPN is encrypted, right? But when you're looking for things with like uh, L2TP, if you need XAuth, 
You know, we can do full or split tunnel with IPsec. Um, obviously, L2TP is simple authentication. You don't need third-party software for that. This is full tunnel without licensing per tunnel, like some competitors do. Uh, uh, a tunnel is a tunnel to us. You know, just users come through it. We don't we don't charge you per tunnel. Um, and obviously, some things are changing with VPN and mobile devices. So using Ike V2 still allows admins with iOS devices to force on-demand VPN with the certificate-based auth. So that's a big thing for someone working on a different device remotely. I want them to only come over VPN. I don't want them to use their you know, iOS data plan, any of that kind of stuff. I want to be able to authenticate them with the VPN cert. This is, av this is available in NGE Firewall Complete or in our Home Protect Plus package. Um, I don't know of a lot of home users that need an IPsec tunnel, but it's there. So IPsec is obviously, uh, like I said, tried and true. It works really well, and it's a it's a requirement in a lot of organizations, such as healthcare, possibly something, um, you know, uh, criminal justice information standards are pretty strict anymore. So maybe like two sheriff's offices talking to each other would need IPsec. OpenVPN is our tried and true open source best friend. Enables you to create SSL based VPNs that support site to site and client to site tunnels. As it stands right now. Untangle's remote employees like me and like Carly are using OpenVPN to access resources. <clears throat> Excuse me. Um, just for a use case for you guys, I here at my house, I have about 300 megabits per second down. OpenVPN can severely impact that sometimes, but it's also a really lightweight little protocol. So the actual speeds can change depending on the time of day, you know, <laughs> the location you're in. But OpenVPN will support any OS with a compatible client, which is basically all of them, even smartphones. Windows has built-in clients. Uh, for Mac OS, we use uh, an app called TunnelBlick. If you're unfamiliar, TunnelBlick is a really good little VPN app on Mac OS. The OpenVPN app itself can run as a server, letting a remote client connect to your Untangle. That's kind of the idea with OpenVPN clients, right? I sign into my client. Maybe I log in with Active Directory or something like that through the client. And then obviously I'm coming into the Untangle server where I get filtered and I count on the license. This is a free app in NG Firewall. So it doesn't specifically have a license associated with it. But if I'm pushing OpenVPN users through the filtering applications, obviously they're going to count on my license. Tunnel VPN is kind of a, a fun little thing that sits in between IPsec and OpenVPN. This is something we created. And it's, it's powered by a fully featured rule set, which lets you create WAN optimization rules with these, these route rules. That's what they're called in Tunnel VPN. So basically, we can route your traffic over any interface, host, whatever you want to do. You know, we just do, we choose the tunnel. Um, so I, I use Tunnel VPN a lot at home in the past to send certain devices over VPN and leave the rest of my network going out over my WAN connection. Um, so devices that, that do things like, uh, like credit cards, you know, you definitely want those to be filtered, checked, that kind of stuff. But other devices, maybe maybe a thermostat or, or a security camera, you know, we can do some some pretty simple filtering maybe over the WAN, you know, may not need to go back to the Untangled to be filtered at headquarters. So the thing it really lets you do is create kind of a, an overlay across multiple networks. So SD-WAN apps want you to create that kind of framework so when you have multiple locations like Untangle does, Tunnel VPN can really kind of fill a gap if you don't want to do something like IPsec. Um, lots of small locations can be managed by just redirecting all their traffic through a central Untangle. So that would look like hub and spoke VPN or mesh or whatever you want to call it these days. Tunnel VPN on Untangle's free package can run to remote sites with an open VPN client that pushes the traffic back to the NG firewall where your licensing is at quote unquote headquarters. So obviously there are uh, you know some different reasons someone would want to use something like a VPN tunnel. Um, privacy, you know, getting around geographical limitations. If you want to watch Australian Netflix, you can do some things like that. And it can actually work with some other VPN providers like NordVPN, I think ExpressVPN. There's a few different providers in there that offer clients. Um, and this is a free app in NG Firewall. So like I mentioned, if you have a use case for free VPN at a remote site, OpenVPN and Tunnel VPN are both part of our free package on NG Firewall. So your remote sites can run really light. They can be pretty low budget. You know, you get some hardware from us with the free apps installed and you set up some tunnels, but then all the licensing and the filtering is done at headquarters. So if I have 10 
10 devices at my remote site and 20 at headquarters, I need a license to cover 30 IPs. So that's how it's kind of going anymore, especially in small businesses that are becoming dispersed. Um, so OpenVPN and TunnelVPN work really well in tandem. They're best friends. Um, but as I said, OpenVPN is still a little bit of a slow protocol. WireGuard VPN is completely different. So we released a WireGuard app here in uh, NG Firewall 16.1 just a couple of months ago. Um, as I mentioned, Untangle is is switching to WireGuard uh, at, at midnight tonight. Um, I actually just set up clients and all that stuff on my box. I'll show you how to go through it. It's it's unreasonably simple. Um, it it was. I, I should have timed it. I recorded a video of it, and the video is about 90 seconds long. Um, my my system guy sent me my config file. I copied it into my WireGuard app, and I'm done. So I'll, I'll go through some of that stuff when we get over to the demo, but um, it's a really, really, really fast VPN connection. Um, WireGuard uses a pretty advanced cryptography and, and a code base, unlike any other VPN product I've found. And it makes their... A, digital attack surface a lot smaller and less vulnerable. They put you into what they call a server swarm, an IP address pool. And the best way to, to describe it is cloud VPN. Once you're in their pool, you're given the shortest path first to your destination. So in our testing, our, our QA people have seen WireGuard running somewhere around 80, 85% of our line speed, which is almost unheard of for VPN. Um, VPN traditionally always slows you down. And we're almost all used to that, and it's kind of a necessary evil anymore. WireGuard is going to change our lives as remote workers. Um, I've got mine all set up. I'm I'm excited to get connected <laughs> basically in the morning. Um, I'm I'm the kind of person who works remotely all day. I sit here and host webinars, and I do trainings and lots of stuff through Bright Talk and, and different conferencing tools. So I I can't really keep VPN enabled all day. Currently, it'll it'll pull my speeds down too low. When WireGuard gets spun up tonight, <clears throat> excuse me, I'll probably just start leaving it on. Um, I, I'm part of our product team, and we all have intranets, you know, that we need access to. That's one of the biggest reasons for things like a VPN client is to get internal resources. And so, once WireGuard stood up, I, I probably won't turn it off. Um, I'm a Mac user, so I have an app for WireGuard. You just go out to the App Store, you go to the Google Play Store, and you get the WireGuard app. And then there will be a config file or a QR code given to you. And that's basically just what you throw into the config and you're up and running. Um, there are WireGuard apps for any OS. Um, I'm an Android and Mac user, so I have both those apps installed now. You can connect to an Untangle remotely, like site to site, or you can connect as a client, like I'm going to be doing. So this is available in NGFW Complete or in our Home Protect Plus. Um, I'm I sound hyperbolic when I say this, but WireGuard is going to change remote workers' lives. It's it's going to change mine starting tomorrow. So I'm I'm really excited about it. We've had it out for a while, and our systems guys have been running all the tests and checking and everything. And it's it's tonight. You know, we're going to switch over. So I'm excited about it. It's a really really easy thing to set up. So some of the pros and cons of just the different uh, options here. We'll go through some. I I won't read every single one of them, but obviously IPsec. You know, you have some faster connections. Um, you know, clients are already built into most devices and OSs, um, and it's tried and true, like I said. Um, but it can be expensive, right? It's our only VPN that has licensing associated other than WireGuard coming in one of the packages. It can be way more complex to set up because you have to get shared key information and, and phase one, phase two information to match on both endpoints. And it's more complex to troubleshoot, obviously. Um, OpenVPN is, like I said, well-known and very commonly used. It's easy to set up. And you can basically get connectivity between pretty much any brand of firewall to a, a network. Um, it does require a client, though, and those connections can be a little slower. Tunnel VPN offers route rules. That's something we don't see in a lot of full tunnel VPN. Um, we are able to send specific traffic over those tunnels, and you can privatize your entire network of just a single endpoint, which is a really nice thing. Um, but it only works with specific types of VPN and support for third-party vendors is a little limited. WireGuard, uh, there were honestly too many pros to fit into this box, um, but it's real easy to set up. Like I said, it has the fastest connections we've ever seen. Uh, pretty much any OS has avail availability with it. The less known trusted VPN option aspect of it, yeah, no, maybe you haven't heard of WireGuard yet, but I promise you will, You know, even if it's not from Untangled, this is, 
I, th I think WireGuard is most likely the future of VPN and everyone else's systems are going to have to mimic their architecture going forward. Um, it does require a client app to be installed on each device too. Like I said, I just downloaded one from the app store and it was super simple. Some of the business considerations for VPN, I've gone over obviously, but firewall compatibility is a big one. Um, if you've got, you know, Cisco's at one site and Untangle's at one site and uh, Fortinet at another site, that kind of stuff, it can be kind of complicated to get all that stuff running together on different solutions. Um, and also VPN capacity, you know, you have to be aware of limits, um, how many concurrent connections you're going to have. You're going to have to have the uh, relevant resources available on the server. Um, and then you need to ensure, like I said, that the hardware can handle the connections and the volume. Um, <clears throat> excuse me, OpenVPN has been hammered <laughs> nonstop for about the last 10 months because we're all using VPN now to work and learn remotely. So just be sure to do some testing, you know, try to get your entire network online over the VPN client and see if it's going to be viable for you. And if not, you know, you might want to move to something like WireGuard, et cetera. Um, and I do see a couple of questions about WireGuard. We'll get to those here at the Q&A session here at the end. We've got a few questions coming in. Um, logging and reports, obviously you want to be able to meet compliance regulations and detect any, any issues with you know, logging and that kind of stuff. Um, there's not a lot of reporting in VPN because there's not a lot of action, right? So you'll see disconnect events and connection events and, and traffic and usage and that kind of stuff. So some additional considerations, you know, do you need full tunnel mode? Do you need two-factor authentication? Do you need dynamic configuration? Um, I'm just going to leave this on the screen here for a second. We don't need to dive into every single little entry, but you can see Tunnel VPN is kind of the most flexible we have. Um, like I said, it requires a client from OpenVPN from another provider, so things can get slow sometimes, but it's a really cool little service. Um, here at my house, I used to just use it to send like uh, PlayStation traffic out of Tunnel because it was connected to my bank account. At a business, you could do similar things with you know POS machines or whatever you want to do. Um, User-based authentication with the directory service is a big deal. Um, the WireGuard client doesn't offer that, but I will show you a way to let WireGuard users authenticate if you need, need them to. Um, I was also going to jump over here real quick and look at some advanced VPN configurations. So when you get into Untangle, we will uh, we'll check out a demo server I have online here shortly, but you can always go to demo.untangle.com and play around right now. Um, the OpenVPN server tab includes all the configuration options for setting up an OpenVPN server. So uh, it's where you create clients for uh, remote or individuals. Um, if server enabled is checked, OpenVPN server is on, and now you can get OpenVPN clients coming through. Site name is the name of the OpenVPN site. Just headquarters, you know, site A, site B, whatever. And then the address space is gonna define the IP network basically for the VPN. Um, a quick pro tip, address space has to be a unique subnet that's not defined anywhere else. That's just how OpenVPN has to work. Um, when you do NAT, OpenV OpenVPN is going to NAT all the traffic from remote networks to your local networks, giving them a local address. Um, obviously, the site URL just shows where they're going to connect. Username, password, authentication lets you utilize things like local directory or uh, Active Directory, whatever you've got set up in our Directory Connector module. Um, the the workaround with the WireGuard client is basically setting up a different policy, and I'll show you how to do that here later. The OpenVPN Client tab will show you the clients that are connected. Um, basically, you can see we have one client connected there. Randy is on his VPN. He doesn't have username, password authentication. You see it's disabled. So this basically just lists currently configured remote servers and then any uh, clients that you'll see there. Um, once you connect, you'll you'll be able to get to those exported networks, get to your resources, all that. This is you know basic stuff. Um, there are no clients allowed to connect to a unique until you put in a unique entry um, for every remote client. So it's just the nature of VPN, right? Tell us the remote network, then they're in. Uh, here's some pro tips, <clears throat> excuse me. Site to site connections are not full tunnel. Uh, internet traffic on the remote site has to exit its local gateway. So keep that in mind. Um, if you need full tunnel, something like that, we probably use a different uh, VPN protocol. Pro tip number two, 
if IPsec VPN is also running, you have to make sure there aren't any tunnels that overlap between OpenVPN and, and tunnel V, I'm sorry, IPsec VPN because they'll butt heads and they don't play nice together. OpenVPN's reporting is, like I mentioned, you know, minimal, but shows you some good events. Um, it can show you top client usage, that kind of stuff. So it's a it's a view of you know any reports, events for OpenVPN, just like the rest of our apps. Uh, you can access it via the dashboard, the reports viewer, or through the OpenVPN module. Um, any predefined reports are listed, and you can always create custom reports, and they can be searched and and filtered and all that stuff basically using conditions on the left. So if you're looking for events or sessions or usage, those are the kind of things OpenVPN's reports can tell you about. Configuring IPsec VPN for remote PCs is, like I said, a little more complicated. We're looking at things like L2TP and IKE v2 here. So those clients are built into most OSs. Um, you don't really download a client for IPsec. Uh, if you do use IPsec, you can actually use username tagging to present usernames rather than IP addresses over IPsec, which is nice. Um, like I said, IPsec is tried and true. You know, it, it, it's a little more complicated to set up. It's definitely more complicated to troubleshoot, but it's a very, very uh, black and white VPN protocol. If it doesn't work, you probably have a typo somewhere in your configuration. So, that's the that's the number one troubleshooting step I see in support here. If your if your IPsec isn't connecting, there's probably a typo in the phase one, phase two info, or the shared key. There we go. Uh, creating VPN tunnels for site to site. You know, multiple networks can be on each end of the tunnel. You know, you're going to limit connections within the remote network and manage bandwidth here. Um, IPsec tunnels can be bypassed as well. If you don't want to filter their traffic, we can just shoot them straight through. Um, Keep in mind, Untangle is a is still a content filter. Our bypass rules will still push traffic through the Untangle. They just won't hit our layer seven applications where they're filtered. Um, we're not <laughs> we're not sending your traffic around the Untangle, but they're still protected. They just don't hit those apps and count on your license. IPsec VPN obviously has uh, some alerting built in too. Um, we can track connection events and alert you when someone is connecting or disconnecting, or if an IPsec tunnel is failing and isn't passing traffic. Um, if you're trying to ping something over a tunnel and it's coming back unreachable, you know that we can alert on that too. Um, maybe the maybe the other endpoint is down or or something's wrong like that. But those are those are alerts we can set up um, here on the device itself. If we're just looking for a quick email to an admin, you can see the IP or I'm sorry, you can see the IPsec VPN event is the class of the alert. And so we're just looking for something that says unreachable. And then we're going to tell you about it. So this can be duplicated in command center as well to notify you a few different ways. Filtered versus bypass traffic, I mentioned this just previously, but we do have a slide on it because I wanted to show you where the box lives. So if you are having trouble with an IP set tunnel, one of the best troubleshooting steps you can take is to click that bypass box. That way, all the processing basically stops. So once we get, oh, there's a typo in it too, when enable. All right, I'll get a screenshot of it now. <laughs> when we do that, like I said, we're not filtering the apps. They're not going to hit any of the, the processing. So they're just going to go straight through. But then you can start determining where the, the problem is once you bypass that traffic. Tunnel VPN is uh, is a really cool little app. It's it's interesting because it can work with other providers as well. So there are some pre-configured VPN options for for things like you know NordVPN, Express, uh, personal internet access, that kind of stuff. It does support most OpenVPN-based configs. Like I said, you can also upload a zip file. You can grab configs from other providers. Um, if you have multiple WAN interfaces, you can actually select which of those the tunnel will exit. So if you have a faster WAN or a slower WAN, it's easy to push them out. Um, and then multiple VPN tunnels, tunnels can be configured and run simultaneously here in Tunnel VPN. I don't know if there's a limit to the number of tunnels you can have. I've, if there is, I've never found it. Um, if anyone finds the limit, please let us know because I'm not sure what it is. Um, Tunnel VPN is, like I said, a, a free app, but it runs it, it runs really light as well. So keep that in mind. You know, these are Open VPN or third party provider configs. So as long as those are set up right, 
Tunnel VPN is a really, really cool little option because it offers routing rules. If you guys can't tell, I'm kind of losing my voice, so I'm muting myself one more time. So the rules I just mentioned will let you dictate which traffic passes over specific tunnels. Um, if you don't have any rules enabled, no traffic passes over a tunnel. So you can layer them to use multiple tunnels like we were just talking about. If you click any available tunnel for the destination, it's going to use tunnels in order that they're listed. So just depending on the tunnels you have set up, use any available tunnel can be really impractical. Um, for the most part, I, I see this being used to specify traffic, not generalize it. So keep that in mind as well. So WireGuard is a very different kind of VPN. Um, we talked about it a little bit. We'll be talking about it more in the future. Um, I'm, I'm sure there will be more you know, webinars talking about it here as we go forward and, and more and more documentation coming. We have articles on how to do all this stuff on support.untangle.com already. Um, this is a very new and modern approach to VPN. Like I said, they're not doing things in a traditional manner. The ease of setup really leads to simple configurations. Um, for admins, what you'll do, and I'll show you this, is just create a file. You create your config here, and then you basically just copy it and email it to your user, your client, whoever, employee. They just copy and paste all of it into the app, and they can do that through a QR code that downloads the app to their mobile device if they want. I'm on my MacBook Pro, uh, so I went and did the config file that my system guy sent me. and. And I was shocked how fast it was, honestly. I'd only set it up once or twice, and it wasn't a real, it was kind of a test setup. Uh, this is the one to, to, you know, let me work remotely, though. So it was super fast. I, I pinged Kyle and made sure I did everything right. And he's like, yep, it's super easy. So WireGuard is truly, I think, probably the VPN of the future. And I can see it replacing OpenVPN and a lot of networks almost immediately. So WireGuard VPN has uh, some different kind of terminology, not really, uh, I don't think it's very confusing if you've ever used VPN, but if you've never used VPN, some things like remote public key, uh, monitor IP address, these come out of left field a little bit. Um, so you can see here, this is from our actual article. Um, it's called setting up WireGuard VPN site to site connections. Um, if we need to do this, our support team can help you obviously, but there is documentation on the support knowledge base too. Um, setting up a, roaming client kind of a, a you know personal client on wireguard is super super simple when you're doing a static like site to site that requires a little bit more information um, mine was a roaming client which was super simple um, i'll leave this on the screen here for just a second so you can take a look though and so i can drink some coffee obviously um, so let's jump over to my server here real quick i'm going to head out of this slide deck and I'm going to go share my Z12 on Tangle device. Carly, let me know if that didn't work. You should be seeing my dashboard. We see it. Looks like you are. Looks good. Cool. Um, so my dashboard is not very busy. So let's go ahead and jump into the apps here. So you can see I have a lot of VPN apps installed. So we're going to go through these not in order because I want to touch on the quick ones first. We'll end in WireGuard. Um, Obviously, if anyone has any questions during this, let us know in the panel. Um, we're going to try to get to as many of your questions as we can at the end. I only have about a 15, 20-minute demo here planned, so we should have plenty of time. Um, but if we don't get to your questions, obviously, you know, let us know pre-sales at untangle.com or sales at untangle.com. Um, if you're already a customer and you have our complete package, you can always do support at untangle.com, too, if you have live support. So let's start with IPsec VPN. It's the old man of the VPN apps we have here. Uh, IPsec VPN is pushing, you know, 40 years old at this point. Um, you can see we have a couple of tunnels running here that are both inactive. We don't have them enabled because this is a demo box. Um, under your IPsec options, this is where you can bypass that traffic like I mentioned. If you want unique IDs, you can do that. The, the default is yes. If you have a specific reason to change it, you're allowed to. Uh, the tunnels live right here when you create a tunnel. Like I said, this is where it gets a little complicated. Give us a description, but then the remote network and the shared secret both need to match. Um, if we get out of this here and I go look at one of these tunnels, we can see some information here. You can see this is an amazingly secure shared secret. It's very case sensitive. It doesn't like punctuation, all that kind of stuff. So 
IPsec gets, <clears throat> excuse me, gets complicated when you start trying to, you know, have multiple tunnels to multiple sites. But as long as you've got the information straight, IPsec doesn't care. It will work. So keep that in mind for troubleshooting IPsec options is where the little bypass boxes. And then the, on the VPN config, if we need to enable the server mode, we, excuse me, we could do this right here. You saw our addresses there for listening. If you want to lay a GRE network on top of a tunnel, that's a thing you can do here. Um, I don't see a lot of use for this in small biz currently, but it's a it's an option in our IPsec. And then the IPsec state really just shows you the state of tunnels. If you have any troubles, it'll show up there, policy and logs. And then you also get an L2TP log if anyone's using it. So IPsec, like I said, is a black and white VPN protocol. The status page will give you brief glimpses of who's actually active. You see, we have no active VPN sessions right now because we don't have any enabled VPN tunnels. Um, I mentioned the reporting in VPN is not extensive because there's not a lot going on. So IPsec VPN actually has the most reports of any of our VPN apps, because you can see here, actual pie charts showing usage stats, all that kind of stuff. My tunnels are inactive, so we don't get to see any cool stuff right there. VPN reports are, um, to me, it depends on the actual user, but once you start asking about VPN reports, there's just not much there, right? It's just a connection protocol. So what we want to see are things like authentications, connections, dropouts. But when people are coming in over a client, I can do something different where I push them through policies, I can send them around through different apps, and then I probably would want to see some reports on their traffic. But I wouldn't want to look at those reports from the VPN. I would come look at the reports from the web filter or the virus blocker, for example. Um, I mentioned a little bit earlier uh, OpenVPN being able to authenticate with Active Directory. So we're going to go over there real quick. This is how you can go in and say, I need my OpenVPN server to authenticate. So there are a few different things we can authenticate against. If you just say any directory connector, that's basically what's what's connected through our Active Directory. So when you do something like Active Directory here on your OpenVPN client, your client itself will show a username and password field, and then they will hit their AD before they get logged in. WireGuard doesn't offer that. There's no authentication. Um, you notice here in the client space, you're, we're seeing remote servers. We don't have anything defined right this second. But on the advanced tab, I wanted to show you there's a lot of big red warnings. We didn't do a slide on the advanced tab because I don't want you in here. Um, it's here for very, very specific advanced use cases. The warnings are there on purpose, right? This can really, really break traffic. Uh, most changes made on this uh, menu, this screen will be unsupported. So keep that in mind if you need to do some different things. You can do some pretty advanced stuff with our open VPN config, but for the most part, I doubt any of this is necessary for just basic remote workers. So tunnel VPN, as I said, is also free and will let you basically come in and create a tunnel from a client. So if I wanted to say untangle is an open VPN client, I would just come down here and grab a, a config file. Nord Express or private internet access are available here too. Uh, we have requests in for a few more providers. We may do more in the future. We, I don't know. Um, as it stands now though, those are the three third-party vendors we can go with. And then if you do the advanced here, basically you're just gonna NAT traffic exiting the tunnel if you need to or any interface. Um, so if I decide to create a tunnel, I can just come over here. I can go select my config file and then I have a tunnel running off an OpenVPN config. So the way I would really do that is I would go into OpenVPN and I would create a remote network client. I would come grab it right here and now I'd have a tunnel. So it's it's a little bit different than an OpenVPN tunnel, but it's really not, you know? So these two apps can kind of blend in together in your mind. Um, they do have a fairly common gray area in the middle of their Venn diagram. So if you're looking for uh, you know, like Ike V2, something specific like that. Obviously, we're going to do IPsec VPN. But if you just need some VPN, we have some neat options. So Open VPN, Tunnel VPN, like I said, once again, are free. But they do offer this authentication stuff. So the actual client on OpenVPN can do it. WireGuard is very different. 
Um, I feel like I went kind of fast over the other three VPN protocols, but they're all pretty tried and true. And WireGuard is new and fun. And this is what I wanted to talk about. Um, so my Z12 here has WireGuard up and running. You see, we have a couple of tunnels enabled. Um, if I need to, I can come over here and check the settings. This is where my network address lives. IP address pool assignment is automatic. I don't want to try to hand out IPs, but we have a network space punched in at 172.25. So the listen port is defaulted. The keep alive interval and MPUs are defaulted as well. And so is the DNS. If you need to change any of the stuff, obviously you can change it. But when you go into tunnels, you're going to see that we have a couple of here created. One's static, one's roaming. So that's side to side on top. And then Brian, you know, working from home. So we have a tunnel set up between this Z12 and a Z4 that's also a demo device. When I create a tunnel, um, let's let's create me one for client. So we're going to say uh, Chad Mick client. So basically, you set static or roaming here. Am I client to site or am I site to site? Site to site, you'll notice, asks for more information. Roaming really doesn't. So because it's roaming, I don't need a remote network. You notice when I change it to static, you have to have a remote IP peer. You have to have a remote public key just to create the actual tunnel. When it's roaming, it doesn't work that way. So what you do for a client is you just say, this is your client. Your roaming, your peer address should be in there. All the information is already there. So you say done. It doesn't look like I did anything because now I have to click save at the bottom right. And then you'll notice my public key generate. So there's that. And so now I'm ready to give this client to my user, Chad. So the remote client right here, I can send him a QR code to download the app, all that cool stuff, or I can just go to the config file. I'll copy this, and then I would send that to the user. Um, in my WireGuard app, I would come in and actually change that, then just paste it in. Um, I don't know if I can show you guys my WireGuard app because it's outside this window. Let's see. The easy thing to do is punch in WireGuard and then just create your new tunnel. So in our uh, actual support knowledge base, let me show you here, WireGuard, oh, I can't spell. So setting up WireGuard VPN on mobile devices and desktops. So this is where I'm able to go say, OK, it should look like that. This is the config file I just showed you. And then here, inside your WireGuard app, this is on Mac OS, you just remove the interface information that's in there and you paste in what I just gave you. Alternatively, you can do the QR code if you're on a mobile device, super easy. And then connecting is basically just a tunnel. So when you get WireGuard up and running, it will ask you when you quit it, if you want to quit the WireGuard app or if you want to leave it running in the background, you can do a couple different things. I'm, I've personally only used the Mac OS WireGuard app and the Android app, but I really like the way both of them work. Um, if you're trying to do full tunnel, you have to you have to modify the allowed IPs. So there are some different notes for Windows systems here, but this is an article on our on our screen on our screen on our support site. So if you're curious. You can go to support.untangle.com and search WireGuard. And that will pop up. The other one is basically for site-to-site -site connections. So like I mentioned, you would just set this one to be static. And then that's where all these terms come in. You just copy the key. Again, you paste the information in. It's a really, really, really simple thing. The reason I like it more now is because my users don't have to sign into a client. Not all employees are technical people, right? Um, here at Untangle, we're a network security company, but we also have a team of, you know, accounting people. And they're not quite as tech savvy as maybe me, but WireGuard is so simple. You set it up once, and then it's really just an app that you open on your device. I, I personally am probably not going to use OpenVPN ever again. Um, WireGuard is going to change things for us pretty drastically tonight, I think. So if you want more information on it, if you want a deeper dive into it, you know, let us know. I could always, we can always schedule a demo with me for 30 minutes and your, your sales rep can get that scheduled. Um, 
just email us if you have any questions, pre-sales or sales at untangled.com. That's kind of what WireGuard looks like and feels like. Um, I wanted to show you guys the app. I just don't want to go unshare my screen and try to find that window and all that stuff. I have three monitors. But like I said, we have documentation. If you have any questions, please don't be shy. Um, there's a lot going on with our VPN. There are no dumb questions. Um, as I said, if you if you request a demo from your account manager here, that demo will likely be with me or with Eric, our other sales engineer. Um, we're a small business too. You know, if you have questions, if you need help, you actually get help. So one thing I want to touch, touch on here real quickly before we jump into some questions and the rest of the slides is I mentioned WireGuard not offering authentication. That could be kind of a problem sometimes. Um, as we said earlier, you'll see IP addresses, you'll see devices, host names. So if, um, you know, if Carly were to use WireGuard to come into my system, I would still see her, you know, MacBook and I would see Carly's MacBook Pro or whatever in the host name. But when you're talking about VPN protocols, anyone connecting over these can come in to a different policy. So in my Untangle, I can go to my policy manager. This is obviously part of our complete package, but this is where I can come create a policy for uh, WireGuard users. I'm abbreviate WireGuard users, users who use WireGuard VPN. I don't want it to have a parent policy. I want to start over from scratch. So I'm not going to inherit any rules, but I'm going to say add. And then I have to say save before I can move on. The important part is the rule. So we don't have any rules currently. So what I will do is say rule for WireGuard users policy. Because WireGuard is a VPN, it now becomes an interface that I can route by. So this is a Z12, it has lots of NICs, but WireGuard VPN is an interface. So when you come in over WireGuard, you go to WireGuard users. I'm gonna save that. Now, when we go out to WireGuard users, I can install a couple of apps. So maybe I want to install um, a captive portal. <clears throat> Excuse me. Once the captive portal is installed, I'll probably want to install other things like web filter and virus blocker. But the captive portal is how I can get WireGuard users to authenticate. I can stand up the captive page that makes them log in once they hit the network. I can check for the cert. I can require the cert. I can authenticate them against a lot of different things here in the captive portal if you leverage it. So even OAuth tokens, if you're using like Gmail, Google authentication, we can hit the token. We allow cookie-based auth, so a WireGuard user 24 hours, you know, they log in once in the morning and then they're good for the day. So that's kind of the workaround for authentication on a VPN that doesn't provide it. So that's, um, if I needed that at my business, that's exactly how I would set up WireGuard. You hit WireGuard from your house or from the hotel room or wherever you're working from today or your remote site. And as soon as you hit this policy, it tells you to log in with Active Directory or, you know, Facebook or Radius, Proxy, whatever you need. So that's kind of how it could work in conjunction. Then obviously any users filtering apps they need, you install them into their policy. And that's how Untangle becomes modular for different groups and different users. We use policies to push people through different devices or different apps. We can push different devices through different apps. We can do that different times of day. I could say everybody on WireGuard goes over here after 4 p.m. So we can throttle them more because they're all trying to watch Australian Netflix over their work connection. So we could do some neat things like that. Just keep in mind, once they're in the system, they become just a regular user and we can route them through all kinds of different traffic or all kinds of different apps. Their traffic can go to different places. Um, that's pretty much my demo. Um, let me jump back over to my slides here. Um, it looked like we had a few questions sitting out there, Carly. Do we have any good ones we could get to? The answer is they are all good questions. Ah, excellent. That's what I like. <laughs> um, yes, uh, some really good questions. Um, so let me just start off. I think a couple might be um, duplicates, but okay. let us get started. Um, and thank you all for um, providing questions. If we run out of time, we will be sure to reach out to you directly. Um, and then you're always welcome, as Chad said, to contact um, us with your questions if you they come up later, which is at presales at untangle.com. Yep. So the first question is, can we now use WireGuard without having the obligation to add the user in the administrator local group on the company yes. laptop? 
Yes. Yeah. Open VPN clients required admin access. Yes, that was terrible. Uh, WireGuard doesn't require that. Does the WireGuard VPN allow DNS push like OpenVPN? They're having um, trouble. Uh, with that. Yes. Um, that's a big answer. Um, we might want to follow up with that one with support. Um, there's a cute, there's a couple things you need to to take into account when you're trying to push DNS over VPN. Um, that might take too long to answer right now, honestly. Um, if you want to email me, presales at untangle.com, I'd be happy to, to shoot you a, a more extensive answer in an email or we can get on a little ch chat or something like that. That's kind of a big answer, though, unfortunately. Okay. Okay. Perfect. No problem. Um, and uh, can you run OpenVPN? I think this question came up a couple of times. If you could run OpenVPN and WireGuard on the same firewall so they can uh, test and use it concurrently. Yeah, I don't see why not. They're using different ports. Um, OpenVPN is always going to default to 1194. WireGuard defaults to 51820, I think. So I haven't seen any issues. Um, like I said earlier, you know, if you're using like IPsec and OpenVPN, their tunnels can clash. But I haven't really seen any issues with, uh, issues with WireGuard. My poor voice. Go ahead. <laughs> uh, this one, I'll give you a 20 second break. Um, okay. So <laughs> this is a question is from someone who has been using Untangle for a lot of years. So okay. thank you very much for yeah, being for real. A, uh, <laughs> a long term customer. Um, so the normal scenario they use is a site to site VPN with branch offices, in some cases, um, up to 40 tunnels, oh. um, and then open VPN client for their end users that need to connect to the network while they're in their office. Mm -hmm. So is switching to WireGuard a best practice? Ah, oh, man, that's a good question. Um, if they don't require authentication, yes, I think it is. Um, just to speed up their connectivity, if nothing else, I think, me personally, as a <laughs> as an employee trainer and someone who helps onboard people, I think you have to get into people's expectations sometimes too, because people will jump onto OpenVPN and immediately complain, right? WireGuard's going to stop that, I think. So switching to WireGuard could be an immediate improvement to your user's experience, I think. Um, it is as secure as OpenVPN. You know, you're not doing like the client side stuff as much. So to me, it doesn't require as much end user interaction. So I think it's a best practice. Um, as I said, it's kind of new still. I'm currently you know, still learning it. It's only been, we've only been playing with it for about two months, three months um, outside of our engineering team. But yeah, as, as far as I'm concerned right now, I think it's a best practice because WireGuard is the way VPN is going to move forward. OpenVPN is old, <laughs> to be blunt about it. It's it's not going to, VPN is not going to work like OpenVPN works forever. It's going to work how WireGuard works. So I think it's a best practice now because it's going to be a best practice probably in a year. You might as well get ahead of it. And I myself um, was someone who begged um, to be a tester for the WireGuard VPN here at really? Untangle. Yes. And yeah. um, because I begged, I was able to get a sneak preview into that. So I've been yeah. running WireGuard on my machine for about two weeks now. And um, I have had zero issues. And it's been um, a really great user experience for myself. Again, yeah. it was really easy to set up. I'm not <clears throat> the most technical of, of employees sure. um, and it did change my life. So we yeah. have to hear are you, and are you Mac was, or Windows, Carly? I am Mac. Okay, yeah, me too. It was so fast. I was I was looking for leftover screws and stuff. <laughs> Why is this set up already? Um, yeah, I, I, that's, a good, that's a good testimonial though. I think it's really, really easy to set up. And I would think, I would, I would definitely encourage um, everyone to provide feedback to us um, regarding your WireGuard experience um, as well. So because it is a, a new technology, um, we're the only firewall vendor that provides WireGuard VPN at the moment. And yeah. so um, <clears throat> we definitely would love to hear your feedback on how it's working for you um, as well. Yep. So. Feed, Feedback.untangle.com, please. Um, okay, so back yeah. to our questions. Um, so let's talk about how compatible um, these uh, VPN solutions are for a central VPN server using dynamic DNS, which oh might yeah, be a for this. Uh, nah, sort of. Um, so you have to set up the dy dynamic DNS first, right? Um, if you're using a company like Cloudflare or something like that, you're gonna have to set that all up. Um, if we're talking about an Untangled that's installed in bridge mode. That's a little less relevant. Obviously, we're not your DNS server. We're not doing DNS mask or anything like that. Um, compatibility, I think, will basically come down to your dynamic DNS. Um, 
I've never seen any compatibility issues with any Dyn DNS, but most of that that I see anymore is Cloudflare as well. That's what we use too. Um, but yeah, we do have a few support articles on that too on support.untangle.com. I've never seen any issues. Great. Um, and so uh, are there any conflicts running multiple VPN servers simultaneously um, if I find myself running both open VPN aware or guard for a while during the, my migration? I, I personally haven't seen those two conflict very much. Um, I'm running them both now on on my server here at home. Um, I'm going to deploy the WireGuard client and stuff to my phone probably pretty soon, but um, I haven't heard any issues so far running them concurrently. Something like okay. that. Um, definitely uh, recommend uh, treading lightly and testing. Uh, yeah, for sure. Yeah. Um, and, and like I said, you know, you, you might want to test it with uh, different policies, you know, pushing them through different kinds of filtering apps. Okay. To me, it's crazy to just bypass VPN traffic. The reason we're setting up Untangle as your VPN server is so we can still filter those people off site. So once you get them through, just create a policy, you know, maybe a policy for open VPN users based on that interface and then a different one for WireGuard users, or you could just do a VPN user policy. WireGuard and open VPN can both be source interface basically. So yeah, I would recommend extensive testing. Um, I haven't heard of a lot of conflicts though. Apparently my screen resolution is too high. I see. Okay. Yes. Good to know. Okay. Definitely difficult in the demo. Yeah. We will, um, we'll, we'll try and um, fix that next time. Yeah, you bet. Um, and can you be using OpenVPN and add WireGuard later? Oh, it's, we've talked about this, running them as testing. So I think we're good there. Right, yeah. It should be OK because they're running different ports. So Does WireGuard still work with Windows 7 clients? I haven't tested any, personally. Um, that's a question I don't know the answer to. Our support team would know better, probably, unfortunately. I just saw okay. that. One. Sorry. <laughs> no, 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 that's fine. We'll take that one offline. So um, sure. we'll reach out to support yeah, um, and get back with you on that one. Um, let's see. When I use OpenVPN, I can ping from one spoke to another. I've not been able to do this with WireGuard. Wonder why. Hmm. Uh, support.untangle.com. <laughs> we, we might need to take a deeper look at that. Yeah, sorry, I'm kind of in the dark on that. Um, without running more tests, you know, obviously, like doing even maybe doing a trace route, seeing where stuff's dying. Um, other, otherwise, the only thing I could think of is like your remote network is wrong or something like that. Yeah. Okay. Um, and then the cost to uh, business um, use versus home use when we're talking about our two different packages. Um, yeah, you can see that on entangle.com. Um, depending on the difference is the number of devices. Our business licensing is done by the number of unique endpoints and our, our home package is basically just a blanket package for either 50 or 150 devices. The, the 150 one, I believe, has WireGuard. Um, so one or those, or I'm sorry, one of those is obviously going to be more expensive than the other. Um, if you get into bigger networks, you know, you're paying a lot by device. But those bypass rules I mentioned earlier are really important because you can go in and tell it not to filter certain devices like your printers or your voice over IP. We bypass those by default. So yeah, the, the business versus home use can be kind of similar at the really low end, but the, the home package is a lot cheaper in general. So we're we're mostly talking about the business use case here today. So for people working from home, like me, um, the business use case is the Untangle at my office running WireGuard, and I just have it running here on my MacBook and my phone. Um, but for me as a home user, I also have it running on my Untangle here at home. So I have two different VPN tunnels on my Android app, so I can connect to work resources or to my house. If I'm out you know, and about, I don't get to go out and about anymore, but if I'm away from home and I want to get on something like public Wi-Fi, I almost never do that without using VPN on my phone just to send me back through my own untangle because I'm a paranoid network security kind of guy. Um, so that's, that's kind of the, the difference to me is that the cost is going to be a big difference. You know, we're talking about business networks here. If you're, you know, like a, a public entity or a nonprofit, we take about half off the software. You can see all that kind of pricing stuff on our website too. Great. Um, and uh, just, it looks like this is an inquiry here. If there's any chance to um, have VPN connections with Amazon or um, 
AWS services, the same thing with a uh, WireGuard. I uh, just asked me, they don't have an example, but. Yeah, uh, yeah, I mean, you could run your Untangle in AWS as a VPN server, as long as it's not in bridge mode in AWS, which doesn't even really give you an option. It should be okay. Um, because we don't run in bridge mode in the cloud, you don't need any port forwarding or that kind of stuff like you traditionally would do on a router in front of us. But yeah, there's, there's pretty much no difference as far as I've seen. Um, running your firewall, your gateway in the cloud introduces other complications to the VPN. I haven't really seen any issue with though. And I think uh, someone, someone mentioned I got it backwards um, and they're right. Our open VPN doesn't require admin rights anymore. Um, WireGuard may require those on Windows, but it doesn't on any Mac I've used. Got it. Yeah. Uh, thank you. So I think, Chad, I think we've gotten through all of the questions. Thank you so much for everybody sending in questions. Yeah, um, yeah. Oh, actually, here's a new one. Just came in. Okay. Does WearGuard use exported networks like OpenVPN does? Uh, for site to site, yeah, you just you basically tell it remote network, um, and then it it will just give you the information. You tell it which subnet, and then if you're doing a static client, yeah, it's going to have to have the remote network to connect to. Otherwise, the the roaming client it's it's built in. As I said, we do have some documentation on that. Um, I have a feeling we'll do a real deep dive into WireGuard before too long as well. Um, and I'll, as always, you know, if you guys have more questions. We have a couple of questions pinned here that we want to follow up with, but just let us know, you know, sales or pre-sales at untangle.com or support at untangle.com as well. Great. Okay. So um, thank you so much for Chad for presenting today and going through um, yeah, all Thanks. of our VPN options. Um, and we hope everyone um, found this information um, useful as well. We have included a number of attachments um, in with this webinar um, as related resources. So if you're interested in learning any more about um, our VPN options in NG Firewall, um, please um, check out these resources that are available. Um, they'll be in the attachments tab. Um, if any questions that have come through that we haven't gotten to, back to you during the webinar, we will reach out to you um, after the webinar. And again, if you're ever interested in having a one-on-one -on -one demo or have further questions, please feel free to reach out to us at presales at untangle.com. Thank you so much for joining and have a wonderful rest of your day.